We all use measuring tapes, I think. They're compact and they're handy and they're full of clever little features that can really make your job a lot easier. That is, if you know how to use them. Today I'll give you what I think is the most comprehensive list of hidden measuring tape features that you will find anywhere. Even if you've seen some of these before, watch until the end. You will learn something new about your measuring tape. The very design of the measuring tape is really a marvel. It has to be flexible enough to roll up in this compact case, but rigid enough to extend away from you. So the tape itself is bent into an arch-like shape. This makes it rigid in one direction and weak in the other. Keep this in mind as you use it. As you extend a tape, it must remain upright to stay rigid. If you're careless about it and you turn it to the side, the tape will collapse. Use this to your advantage if you want to measure to a point several feet away from you. Don't walk all the way over there and put the tab on the end of the object. Everyone on the job site's gonna laugh at you. Instead, throw your tape to it. This is done by pulling the tab in a quick, smooth motion. It takes a little practice, but you can usually get four to six feet depending on the tape, which means you can be at the end of an eight foot board in a couple motions and save half a mile of walking over the course of a day. Some people have turned this into an art, but to go this far, you'll need a really loose spool with a stiff tape and a lot of time to practice. The downside of a tape's arch-like shape is its inability to measure curved objects with any real accuracy, but there are a couple ways around this. One method is to wrap the object with a string, then measure the string. Another option is to get a flat back measuring tape. Believe it or not, once you have one of these, you'll wonder how you lived without it. It's one of my favorite measuring tapes in my shop. I'll link to this and some of the other really cool specialty tapes that I use in the description area below this video. I'll also pin them to the top of the comment section where you can find them easily. Some of the best measuring tape secrets can help you do math. Let's say I want to find the center of a workpiece. Instead of dividing an odd fractional number like eight and seven eighths in half, I'll angle the tape to an even number like 10 and divide that in half to find the center. The same method may be used to divide something into multiple equal parts. Nine is easily divided into three sections of three. Twelve is easily divided into four sections of three, and so on. If you simply want to divide a rough measurement in half, such as 38 inches, fold the tape over on itself, placing the tab on the 38, and you'll find half that number, 19, at the bend. A similar tip allows you to quickly subtract one measurement from another, such as five and a quarter from 28 and a half. Place the tab at 28 and a half and measure back five and a quarter. The answer is right there, 23 and a quarter. Here's another arithmetic trick that's more useful for, I think, break time than the actual job. Place the tab on the mark that corresponds to the current year. This is 2022, so I put the tab on 22. Now ask someone their age, and the tape will tell you the year that they were born in. Since this trick is mostly exciting to a six-year-old, let's go to number six, and the tape tells us he was born in 2016. Now if you do want to try this with someone older, consider the zero point to be 1900 instead of 2000. So the 90s would be the 1990s, which is when I was the coolest, and 2022 would fall at 122 inches. I'm 44 years old, I know, I don't look a day over 43, but according to the tape, I was born in 1978, which I was. It works the other way too. If I know you were born in 1985 because you like hair bands and acid wash jeans, the tape would tell me you are 37 years old and you should stop wearing the acid wash jeans. A measuring tape may also be used as a square. If you have a four-sided object, such as a box or a frame, you can measure from corner to corner in one direction and see if that matches the distance between corners in the other direction. If it does, it's square. If you only have two pieces to square, use the three, four, five rule. That's three along one side, four along the other, and five to connect them along the hypotenuse. These are ratios, not necessarily fixed numbers. So while you can use three inches, four inches, and then five inches on a small project, you could use three feet, four feet, and five feet on a large project, but you could also use something like six inches, eight inches, and 10 inches, 
anything as long as the ratios are the same. Many tapes also have special markings on them to help with common construction layout. There's usually an arrow every foot to help with those common increments. Every 16 inches is often in red to help you quickly identify common wall stud spacing. And while it's a little less common nowadays, some tapes also have diamonds every 19.2 inches, which divides an 8-foot sheet into 5 equal parts for some joist and rafter spacing. Having these markings on the scale can save you a lot of time, but even more useful is if you have the ability to make your own marks right on the tape to record various measurements that you're going to repeat throughout a project. You can do this with a dry erase marker on any measuring tape but it does tend to wear off easily. I've done it with a regular Sharpie and then use some WD-40 to clean it off later. The tapes I use from FastCap have matte surfaces that are easily marked with just a pencil. It takes a little moisture and some scrubbing to wipe the pencil off so the marks will remain for the whole project. You can do this on most of their tapes, but they also make a special story pole edition, which has extra room for marks and notations. I love these, and they're relatively inexpensive enough that you could just dedicate one tape to a project that you plan to build frequently, such as if you make a lot of Adirondack chairs, this is your Adirondack chair tape. Another way to keep track of measurements is to mark them on the side of the tape's case. My tapes have pencil-friendly surfaces that make that easy. But lacking that, you could just pop on a post-it note. I kind of like that idea because the note can then be transferred to another tool like the table saw if you don't need the tape there. Sometimes it pays to have more than one type of tape for the job. That story pull tape, for example, or the flat back, or maybe even a left-hand, right-hand tape so the numbers are upright no matter which direction you measure in. I definitely recommend that you have one with both imperial and metric measurements. Ever buy a set of project plans and wish they were converted to the system your country uses? Get requests like that all the time on our website. If you have a tape with both scales, you have the conversions right there for you. If you don't have a double scale tape, you'll just have to do some math. Remember, you can convert from inches to millimeters by multiplying by 25.4. And you can convert from millimeters to inches by dividing by 25.4. So either remember 25.4 or get a double scale measuring tape. By now, most people know that the tab on the end of the tape is supposed to move. This makes it possible to take both inside and outside measurements accurately. But have you ever checked to see if yours moves the right amount, which should be equal to the thickness of the steel tab itself? Hook that tab on the end of a board and carefully mark a measurement. Then butt another piece against the end of the board so you can place the tab up against it. If the same measurement falls in the same place, you have an accurate tape. If it doesn't, you may want to consider burning an inch whenever you need a really accurate measurement. Burning an inch means starting your measurement on the one inch mark instead of the tab. That eliminates the tab and makes the tape just as accurate as your eyesight. But remember, you have to subtract that inch from your final measurement. One place you can't burn an inch is when taking an inside measurement, but this doesn't mean you can't be accurate. Instead of bending the tape and trying to eyeball the correct line, measure and make mark from one side, such as at 5 inches, then measure from the other direction to that mark and add the 5. Some tapes try to simplify this by noting the width of the body on the case so you can add that to your measurement, but I find the other way more accurate. You'll usually find a slot in the tabbed end of most tapes. This makes it possible to hook onto a nail, which will hold it more securely than simply hooking onto the edge of something. I find this most useful when taking very long measurements, such as the side of a building. But, but there's more you can do with that tab. If you file some serrations into it, you can use the tab to score a line parallel to an edge. This is a nice quick way to break down materials. If you don't want to mar your tab, you could place a pencil against it and hold it there as you run the body of the tape along the edge. Some prefer to pinch the tape between their fingers and run those against the edge of the board, but watch out for splinters. You can also draw a circle with a measuring tape. One method is to hook the tab onto a nail and place your pencil against the case. With the tape locked against retracting, you can draw your circle. If you wish for more accuracy, you may hold the point of the pencil right on the point of the scale that you require, but it can be a little tricky to maintain that precise position all the way around the circle. 
You could also reverse everything. Hook the body of the tape on the nail and hold the pencil on the tabbed end. Believe it or not, a measuring tape's best friend might be a magnet. Keep a couple of rare earth magnets attached to maybe the rivets on your tool belt, and the next time you drop something, the measuring tape can become a pickup tool while you stay on the ladder. Don't forget to check out the links to the FastCat measuring tapes that I use below this video. I've been using them for six or seven years now. I've really put them through their paces. You will be amazed at how many clever problems they're designed to solve. See you next time.